prayer time. It's prayer time. Come on, if you need prayer, come down to the altar. Are we streaming? Come on down to the altar. If you know somebody who needs prayer, they are unable to be here, you come down to them. Then if everything is good with you, I want to ask you to stand at your seat. Y'all come on in, come on in, come on in. We're trying to sleep the water now. That's what I'm asking them. Y'all come on up. I want everybody at the office. Come, come on around here. Y'all come on. Turn on in. Y'all come on in. Y'all come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come over the situation but it's not as bad as it was and the only reason that you are in the state that you're in now is because God's been keeping you if I'm talking to you just squeeze the hand of the person he's a keeper can, can, you, can you just open your mouth and just say he's a keeper People, people, people don't even know. They, they don't even know. They don't, they don't, they don't even know what you've gone through this year. Even, even the closest, your closest friend, as much as you talk to them, they can never experience what you've experienced. So, so sometimes you, you don't even have the words to express them. And they just see you crying all the time and see you, see you, and this actually what's wrong. Hmm. They don't understand. When I come to church, I don't come in here playing. Do I got some help in here? I, I, I need to be here. I got some real worship. My worship is for real. My worship is for real. Do I got some help here? If I'm talking to you, can you lift your hand and just worship God through your trouble? You don't know my story, nor the things that I've been through. You can't feel my pain. And what I had to go through to get here, you will never understand my pain. So don't try to figure it out. Just know my worship. My worship is for you. My worship is for you. Who am I talking to today? Can you lift your hands while I say it? You know my story and all the things that I been through. You never feel my pain. Just 
is me. And what I had to go through to give you, you never understand my pain. So don't try to figure it out when I lift up my hand. Just know my worship. My worship is for Just know my worship. Oh, I got a witness in here. My worship is for me. What's happening? I've been through too much. Come on. I've been through too much. Not to worship him. To worship him. I got a witness. I've been through too much. Not to worship him. You don't know how many close calls I've had. I've been through too much. Oh, yes. Now, you worship me. You don't know how close I've been to homeless. I've been through too much. Say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. My worship is for you. My worship is for you. Say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. My worship is for you. My worship is for you. Say Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, Thank you. 
Respect to those who are weak in the God. Help us to help us to help us to help us to so glad to see all of us what is this third Sunday this fourth Sunday the last fourth Sunday in 2013 and God has been faithful to us am I right he's been faithful to us I want to do a real quick song The love been good to me. Let me say y'all down the Oh Lord, the love been good to me. i 
Saw my sister right here, boy. She was, she was right here in her arms next to mama. She was shaking her head. I know that you, you know, when you shake your head, you mean that. <laughs> Amen. I want you to turn real quickly to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. I want to uh, say in the sermon series where I, what I was talking about on last week, the promise. And, and I talked about how all of us are pregnant with the promise. God has promised us something, uh, but it's, it's, it's important for us that we are in the right positions and that we're doing things the right way in order for the promise to come forth. Amen. Matthew chapter 1 verse 18. Once you get there, I would ask you to rise to your feet. And I'm going to try to do this in 19 minutes and 58 seconds. Say, Lord, help me. Yeah, come on. If you're able to stand, stand. Matthew, that's the first book of the New Testament. Amen. Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. You'll find these words recorded. Verse 18. Verse 18. 
It says, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit, verse 19, because Joseph, her husband, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly, verse 20. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Mm, don't miss that. Verse 21 then says, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Verse 22. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Verse 23. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Verse Verse 24, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Verse 25, but he did not consummate the marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Let's look, let's look, let's look. And I want to talk about real quick for 19 minutes. I want to talk about the protector of the promise. Look at somebody and say, neighbor. Are you a protector of the promise? Turn and look at somebody else. A neighbor? Are you a protector of the promise? You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. On last, on last Sunday, I talked about I talked about Mary and how Mary, um, the mother of Jesus, was pregnant with him, and God had promised her and Joseph that she would give birth to the Messiah. She had a promise inside of her, and I pointed out on last week how important that Mary was fulfilling the principles of being a promise carrier, because you have to understand, brothers and sisters, that everybody who have a promise is not qualified to be a promise carrier. See, there are a lot of things that we want to do. There are a lot of things that we have promised even ourselves that we would get done. But I need to tell you, if you do not have the right character characteristics or character traits, and if you do not follow the principles of God, then you will never be able to give birth to that thing that you even want for yourself. See, you got to understand, Mary, the Bible says that she was chosen to be the vessel of the promise to carry, or, or to carry the promise who is Jesus. She was chosen, and the Bible says that Mary had favor on her. And I suggested to us on last week that you don't just get the sign of favor hung around your neck without some pre-qualification. See, everybody want to have the favor of God and the favor of God, it qualifies you to getting things well before your time. Having the favor of God qualifies you to be in places that you don't even have the credentials to be able to be um, leaders of. It, 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 it allows you to make money that you don't have the credentials to make the money for. Favor allows you to jump over people. Here it is. It allows you to jump over people who are more qualified for from than you, but they don't know that you got somebody that's qualified in you. So, so, so that's what fa everybody wants favor, but you fail to do follow the principle that will keep you in line with favor. So Mary was seen in the beginning to have these principles so God was able to hang this tag of favor on her. And those of us who even know Jesus' story, um, you are well, you are well aware, and you know how his situation, how what he went through as a little child at the age of 12. He was he got lost, ran away from mom and daddy. They were on a vacation and Jesus ran away from them from there. 
am. Yeah, at the age of 12, I ain't got no help in here. See, even back in them times, they needed one of them little kid holders with the leashes. I ain't got nobody in here. Jesus got away, and for two weeks, watch this, Mary and Joseph, they were some hot messes. Two weeks, they didn't even know Jesus was gone. They didn't know where he was. They thought he was staying with one of the other relatives. But when they start calling around to tell Jesus it's time to come home, they're like, hey, here at my house. Anybody ever been there? Uh-huh. And, and so when they finally backtracked from where they came from, they found out that Jesus was in the temple praying. And when they get there, when they get there, Jesus and Mary was upset, saying, where have you been all this time? We've been looking for you. And, and Jesus said, look, I got to be about my father's business. Yeah. And that's when Jesus began his ministry during that time. But what's interesting to me, everything that Jesus or Mary went through as a mother, there had to be somebody there to protect what was in her. Mm. I ain't got no help in here. Because see, you think it was male chauvinist now, you should have seen back in those days how chauvinistic men were. I mean, women couldn't do anything without a man's presence. And so for Joseph to be chosen, this protector, and see, it couldn't have been just anybody, no. It couldn't have been just anybody to be, to be this protector. He had to have these certain qualities. He had to have these certain traits in order to have to be the protector of the promise. Now, now what's amazing to me, and I told Pastor Mays on my way to church, what's amazing to me is that during the whole episode of Jesus, and as important as a father a man was back in those days, you would have never, you would never find in the word of God that Joseph ever said one word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sister, Sister Halliburton said, I like men like that that don't talk. Hush, be quiet. He didn't say one word during the whole discourse of Jesus being born, everything that Jesus went through. You will not find in the Bible where Joseph said one word. The man who had all the responsibility, who had all the authority, didn't even speak. But yet God chose him to be the protector of the promise. I ain't got no help in here. Uh, can I just pause just for a few moments? I got 15 minutes and 30 seconds. Can I just call and tell you that you got to be careful because this year, next year, 2014, God is going to send you people, but you better make sure that you're able to identify what their functions are. See, you, you got to understand. You got to understand. So today, I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to tell you so that you will be able to identify who the protector will be for next year. Uh-huh. And see, you got to understand, you got to understand this is an important position. This is an important position. So you got to make sure that you're able to identify who they are. Now watch this. Not only, not only was Joseph chosen the protector, and can I tell all of us in here this morning, you got some great aspirations. And can I tell you, it doesn't matter how old you are, you should never stop dreaming. You should never stop trying to achieve. You should never stop wherever you are. I used to never stop because the Bible lets us know that if you've got Jesus Christ on the inside of you, you can never be satisfied with the mundane. You can never be satisfied with the status quo. No, you can never be satisfied with just having good. No, you won't great. If you got Jesus on the end, that's why trifling Nick, I mean Negroes, can really come at you because you understand that you deserve better than what you have. You deserve no better than these brothers coming at you talking all lame and crazy. I ain't got no weapon here. Oh, look at somebody and say, I deserve the best. I deserve I deserve the best. But listen, I gotta move. I gotta move. Got 13 minutes left. You gotta understand that God, even when you choose a promise, it's God that's gonna choose a protector. Because remember, even back in those days, just like today, but we really flipped the script system to us to where women now propose to men. But back in those days, it wasn't supposed to be like that. God always sent the man. He who finds the white fire. I ain't got no help in here. And 
and so and so here God sent the man God sent the protector of the promise now you got to understand and I'm moving real quick that, um, what's his name Joseph was a major dude the Bible if you look in genealogy chapter 1 of Matthew it talks about genealogy and it talks about Joseph being of the house of David and you do remember that in Bible history that Jesus would come out of the house of David and so Joseph was in line and can I tell you this man really epitomized what it meant to be obedient he really epitomized what it meant to be crazy and have crazy faith in God because if you're honest with me you know even today we believe in the immaculate reception but we don't believe in the immaculate conception I got no help in here because you can't tell no brother today that you got pregnant by the Holy Spirit no uh uh baby bye no no uh uh no uh uh baby bye uh, yeah I know I know I'm in the spirit I know I speak in tongues I go to church but no uh uh no we, I wish I, had, I wish I had some men in here yeah I, I wish I had somebody know what I'm talking about that, that now you, you, you don't believe in getting pregnant by the Holy Spirit now. And so here, this man, I ain't got time to hang out there, but here, this man, he had to, he had to look over and still protect the wife, even during those circumstances, because if you understand what, what the penalty is for a woman being, uh, being married and not being a virgin, the penalty was death. That's in Deuteronomy. You'll find it. The penalty was death. So here, Joseph, first of all, Joseph tripped out because if you look in verse 18, I think it was, it said that they, his wife got pregnant and it was by the Holy Spirit. And then verse 14, 19 said that David, I mean that Joseph really wanted to divorce her. He wasn't cool with that. I ain't got no help in here. Uh, most, of us, most of us brothers who are here, we would have the same response of Joseph. We really wouldn't be cool with that. No, look at somebody and say, no, I ain't having that. We, we really wouldn't be cool with that. But then on the other hand, all it took was two verses, uh, because the Bible said uh, that the angel spoke to, to Joseph uh, and told him, listen, I got, I can see, I can see the baby inside of her is from the Holy Spirit of God himself. And then immediately it said that Joseph was okay with it. Isn't it amazing how this man, first of all, is a protector, then secondly, he is one uh, who is sensitive to the Spirit of God. He was okay when the, when the angel spoke to him. He said, okay, God, since you said it, I believe it. So let me help you, and I'm on my way home now. Listen, I need to talk to those of us who are in here. Now listen, when God sends the protector to you next year, make sure, first of all, that he is a protector because he's all about your safety and covering you. But then number two, make sure that he's sensitive to the spirit of God. Yes. Would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor? Yeah. Make sure he's sensitive to the spirit. We've got to be able to hear from God. I don't know about you. Listen, you can hear from Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, but if you don't hear from God, it ain't official. I wish I had some help in here. I know we made those pages on our new daily news, but the fact of the matter is, listen, if you ain't talked to Jesus yet, then you really don't have much to say to me. And see, you need to make sure, brother, you know, anybody in the building this morning, you know you got to relate relationship with the Lord, you know that you talk to him on a regular, you know he knows your voice, you know he knows your number, he knows that you ain't the one that just called him when you're going through, but listen, in the morning you'll wake up and you'll just say thanks to Jesus, I ain't got no help in here, he knows that you ain't gonna just call him when you need money, but he knows when you walk in the kitchen and you see food up in the cupboard, you'll just say hallelujah, thank you, I wish I had some help in here. Oh yeah, he know that you ain't just on this trail because it's Christmas time, but he know when you hear from your baby on the phone and they still doing all right, you can't help but say thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody in the building this morning? Have you talked to Jesus lately? I ain't got no weapon in this house. I need you to look at somebody and say, I talk to Jesus. And if you talk to him, let me talk back to you. Is there anybody in here know he'll walk with you? Does anybody in here know he'll 
to talk with you. If anybody in here knows who to tell you, I am your own. I dare you if you got a relationship with him. I dare you to open up your mouth and say, Jesus. Oh, I got 10 minutes left. Look at somebody say 10 minutes, let me fresh you on. I'm, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. I'm on. We should be committed. We should have we should have obedience. We should be obedient to God's will, sensitive in the spirit. And then we should be a leader. Look at somebody and say he should be a leader. Verse 24, it talks about Joseph woke up. He did what the angel of the Lord commanded him to do. And in verse chapter 1, verse 20, you will find what uh, Joseph told Mary on the found out that she was pregnant, but he stayed there. He didn't run. Then number two, he went to get her to take her to Egypt. That was chapter 2, verse 13. Then he goes back and takes her or returns from Israel. He returns from Israel, chapter 2, verse 19 and 20. And then and then he was warned by God not to return to Judea, and he didn't do it. Matthew chapter 2, verse 20. I'm trying to hurry up, y'all. So, so listen, he was a leader. Listen, when he was commanded to me, he did not mind leaving. He, he was not afraid to go. He was not afraid of what people were going to say to him. He was not afraid of what people were going to do. He was not afraid. A leader is not afraid of ridicule. A leader is not afraid of what people are going to say. A leader is not afraid of how things may look to other people because if God said it, it's going to look funny anyhow. I ain't got no weapon here. See, when you're sensitive to the Spirit of God, it's going to look crazy to other people. Why are you praying for people that's hating on you? Why do you love people even though when they falsely accuse you? I ain't got no weapon here. Why do you speak to them and you know they talking about you like a dog? Oh yeah, because I'm led by the Spirit of God. Can I get somebody to just touch another neighbor? If they neighbor, I'm led by the Spirit of God. Oh yeah, he was the protector. He was the protector of the promise. He protected the promise. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to protect the promise. See, God is going to send you somebody that's going to protect the promise. And listen, I'm going my way home, and I promise you I'm leaving this time. Now, what was amazing to me about Joseph, this blew my mind. Since I heard y'all probably knew it, but this blew my mind. I, after I started reading about Joseph, Nicola, I had to look at the cross, and I said, where was Joseph at the cross? Mother was there. His brother was there, but the father wasn't there. He wasn't at the cross. We didn't find anything in the world where it said, and Joseph died. Never, 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 never seen anything where Joseph, that the daddy had died. So I said, where was Joseph? Where was, where was Joseph? Daddy at the cross. Where were you? God gave me revelation. He said, in this next season, they're gonna, they're gonna be people who's gonna protect the promise, but won't be able to protect the promise. Yeah, let me put that on the bottom shelf so everybody can catch it. He had an assignment to protect the promise, but then he couldn't protect the promise. I know you already knew that. That was just me. You know, I, 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 I he, he got, so there was a season that he was assigned to protect the promise. And to fulfill his assignment, he could not protect the promise. Because the promise had to die on the cross. Y'all know any father would have been fighting for his son. Come on. We, we, we would have brought the whole family. We would have had spears. We would have had everything. Come on. We, we would have been fighting for our son. But, but Joseph understood in order for the promise to be fulfilled, he couldn't protect it anymore. So there's going to be a season for your protector, your covering. It's going to come for a season, but then it's got to let you go in order for you to fulfill what God has placed in you. The all right 
right with that. Be all right with that. Be all right with that. A season that he will come and then he will have to go. You're covering. Look at your neighbor and say, you're covering. You're covering. That's what I'm talking about today, a covering. Every person needs a covering. I'm the pastor. I'm your pastor. I'm your covering. I pray for you. I cover you in the spirit. I lay before God for you. I'm here for you. You need a covering. Look at somebody say, you need a covering. It's be careful. Be careful about people. In ministry, watch this. Who have no covering. You know what I'm talking about, Mama? Be careful. People in ministry that have no covering. When you go to churches, I know, I know a lot of people start in churches. And I ask them, who is your covering? Who, who do you answer to? Oh, well, I ain't, I ain't got, no. I, I, I ain't got nobody. I ain't got no covering. Be careful. Because that's not of God. You should have somebody that you're accountable to. I have somebody I'm accountable to. My pastor. Can't be out here on your own. Can't be out here on your own. You need a church. Listen. If you don't have a church home, you don't have a cover. Hear me. Everybody stand. That's why I love you. Everybody stand up. Praise you. And I worship you. If you don't have a church home, worship you don't have a couple. Just for who you are. If you don't have a church home, Years. And I'm talking about a place that the pastor knows you, you are in a relationship with me. If you don't have a cover, if you don't have a church, you don't have a cover. I mean, everyone close your eyes. And I want you to be honest. If you do not have a cover, you turn the CD off. That's why I love you. If you don't have a cover, and you are not a member of a church, would you raise your hand? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Everybody's looking with me. My preacher. All right, you put your hands up. You gotta be covered. Gotta be covered. Now I'm asking you to step out on faith now. Because you need to have a covenant. In order for God to make the promises in you, you gotta have a covenant. So if I'm talking to you, I want you to move out of your seat. Move out of your seat. And come down and give me your hand and give God your heart. Nobody's looking, nobody's looking. Nobody's looking. Nobody's looking. Come on, we have more. There's somebody else. There's somebody else. Take a chance on God. 
You know you're not where you're supposed to be spiritually. Come on, you're holding on to some things that God is trying to get you to let go. Come on, if I'm talking to you, move out of your seat and say, listen, I don't want to start 2014 like I've been doing this. Come on, move out of your seat now. You know you need to be in a church home. And God has brought you here so that we can connect together in spirit. Come on. This will be enough, but move now. All right, come on, let's get God in here to play in this place. Before you sit down, before you sit down, would you turn to the people around us that are not members of our church and ask them if they're saved, if they have a church hall, and tell them I'll walk down with you. Come on, talk to them. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. He may be seated. He may be seated. Amen. We have one. Come on, give God some prayer. We have one. Thank God. God is doing something through this woman of God, and we just believe our connection is going to help her both what God is putting there. I mean, you've been going through a lot, but God has still been faithful. He's still been faithful. We're just looking for great things from you. Amen. Amen. Anything you'd like to say? Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Good morning. Your coming has said enough. Amen. We love you. Amen. I'm be excited with her being here today. Amen. Get some information. Hey, Amen. Come on, let's give our family member another hand, y'all. Come on. All right. It's offering time.